this video is going to be um, on monitoring and packet capture on the Palo Alto firewalls. It was a, a comment on a recent video of mine and I thought it's, it's a video I've been wanting to do for a while uh, because I think that it's um, Palo have made it very simple to do. Um, but on initial looking at it, it can be uh, a bit complicated and, and difficult to know where to go. Yeah, so essentially, there's two or three ways to capture packets on Palo Alto firewalls. There's the custom packet capture using where we are now, which is the monitor tab and then packet capture. Uh, that's basically where you, you choose through filters and everything to capture the traffic that's going through the firewall. There is the threat capture uh, that's configured in your uh, so that's configured in your objects. That's actually becoming quite annoying already. Yeah, so within the spyware uh, and spyware profile, you've got the ability to capture capture packets. So again, you do that there. Um, and then that's your you option you got there is disabled a single packet or extended capture. And then that is characterized by if we go to threat and pull that out of there because we don't need that there. And just give it a minute. Uh, there isn't a single one here. Um, so if I'm, uh, information. Okay, so then when we look to where we have, we have some that have been configured with the um, with the packet capture we can see here that we have a little green arrow to one side and if we click on that we can see what was um, we can see what, what was captured basically so it's captured that packet it's captured that request and if we wanted to export that to look at it then we could do from the export tab Okay, so the third is then on, on the command line, and that's for capturing the management traffic. So as we know, a lot of services run out of the management interface. In fact, actually by default, that's where um, the firewall goes for its updates and things like that. So if you were to start looking at um, why things like that weren't working, then you could do a, a, a TCP dump there, and we'll show that later. So on the monitoring tab, we see the that's really bugging me. <coughs> we see the um, the definable options for the packet capture. Okay, so if you point to so let's have a look. We get so we get configure filtering, and this is where configure filtering is where we define the traffic uh, that we want to capture. Following the manage filters, you can see that you have the ability to create four IDs. So let's say, for instance, you wanted to capture this traffic from 04 going anywhere. You have the option there of um, source port and destination port and protocol. So the first thing you want to do is enter the ID for the filter, then where you expect it to come from. Um, so, and then you've also got protocol as well, which as I say, so for instance, ICMP is protocol one, TCP is six, and UDP is 17. So if you only wanted to capture, say, ICMP traffic coming off of it, use one, um, and then non-IP, include, include only, um, or exclude. And also you've got an option there for IPv6. If I wanted to see as well any replies coming back from there, then I can add another one there. So if I wanted to see something coming from the internet, for instance, I could leave that blank and that would be uh, as all. And then put my in there. Go on. And then non IP include and that's and then our filters are there so then you've got let's say you can add up to four for the packet uh, filters 
Okay, so you see, so that should just be right now. Okay. So then we have the pre-pass match used for advanced troubleshooting purpose. So the idea being that in normal operation, a packet enters the ingress port and it proceeds through several processing steps before it's passed for matches against pre-configured filters. If at any point, if at any point these fail, then you may very well not see the traffic that you're looking for or not be able to identify it. So setting the pre-pass match to on will emulate a positive match for every packet entering the system. This allows the packet capture to see all the packets that enter the firewall. Then they are processed accordingly, so if a filter drops, then they were dropped, if allowed, allowed, and so on. Um, it does tend to make captures bigger though. Okay, so once we've configured our filters and decided what packets you want to capture, we need to go down to the actual configure the capturing here. Okay, and this is where we'll go through the stages a bit. So you can decide at what stage you want to, to capture the packets. So drop, the drop stage, the first one there. So when packet process encounters an error and the packet is dropped. So that will only capture the packets as they are dropped by the firewall. Uh, the firewall stage, when the packet has a session match or a first packet with a session is successfully created. So this is when the firewall has accepted the packet so the you say so you've got a session match so you've either got an established session or it's um it's first packet with a session and it's successfully created so it is a a firewall known stateful connection uh, receive when the packet is received on the data plane processor so as it's received by the device and transmit when the packet is transmitted on the data plane processor okay so, for instance, in our particular uh, example, if we were going to be capturing that way, then we would probably want to capture it um, at the receive, so that we're receiving the packets as they're coming from inside, transmit to make sure they're going back out, and then obviously we'll see that on the receive again, and probably a drop as well, just to see if anything's being dropped. The file name, whatever you put in here, will ultimately be what the uh, packet capture is called, um, it should begin with a letter uh, and can include letters, digits, periods, underscores and hyphens um, and then that is what will appear in this window at the side packet count so you can specify as it says the amount of packets from 1 to whatever number that is and then byte count again <laughs> you can specify the amount of bytes that you want to capture so if we want to capture that traffic switch filtering on I would add a receive stage I'd call that my that just happens to be my NAS so I'll call it my NAS I don't want to set a limit for packet count and byte count because I don't need to at the minute okay I'm not going to put pre-pass match because I'm only wanting to um, catch traffic that is being allowed through the firewall switch to packet capture on and of course you get the little warning to say packet capture warning um, it's best not to capture on things like whole subnets, for instance, because um, you can greatly degrade the performance. I mean, it, all these things are contextual. So if you have a 220 like me, then you'd want to be careful how you capture the traffic and how much traffic you're actually capturing. If you have a 7000, um, you can probably be a bit more liberal. OK, so we can see I'll turn it off now. Okay, so we can see now that we've captured some traffic coming off of my NAS. And if we go to it, we can open it, we can open it with Wireshark. And then we can just go ahead there and we can see, um, we can use Wireshark as we normally would. Uh, deleting them is just as easy. It's dead simple. Delete it off the box. Go on to delete it. Yes, I do. Do want to delete that? Yes, I do. And then for good measure, you can just do that. Or to be really quick, there is the clear all settings at the bottom there. 
So you can see that actually setting up the packet capturing is a lot easier than, than some other vendors. Um, however, there is also the concept of TCP dump um, as well. And we can also show um, on global counters, we can have a look and see where things are being dropped. So I'll just bring in a terminal. Okay, so we're in the, uh, the, the command line here, as we can see. So if we want to have a look and see where traffic is being dropped, we can do our show counter global command. Okay, and then we need to filter because we need to, but we're just going to have a look at everything that's on there. So then delta, delta yes, meaning I want to see everything that's changed since the last time I ran this command. Packet filter, yes. So I'm looking at all the packet filters as they go through the box. Okay. So here it's, it's fairly easy to see um, the reason for whatever's happened. So we can see the session there, uh, session timeout open by service object. We have a flow, we have an app ID, NAT, um, TCP SYN missing. We can see we've got 11 there. Um, missing TC, SYN packet for TCP session. And we can see ones that have been dropped. So low drop. So we can actually then, if we do that again, so this time we've got 53 because it's different because it's since we last looked at it. Okay, and so if, uh, if we wanted to go through this again, and so we have Ferragi drop gives us the output that you can see there and you can see above. So we can see that if we just have a quick look at the, the global counters, we can see where things are being dropped fairly quickly and fairly easily. So we can see at the minute we've got flow host service unknown, 27, 151, 411. I don't know if necessarily I should be looking at this. Um, and that's on the management plane. Uh, so session discarded and the description there, unknown application to control plane. So that's clearly something that he's trying to hit the control plane. It doesn't know what it is. Okay. Um, so there are, there's several ways of looking at this, several ways of checking stuff um, going through the box. So if you were doing a, um, a troubleshooting session or you was trying to get somebody to try some traffic, you could very quickly run this command and just see what's being dropped. And if they're trying the traffic at the same time, then you'll see the, the counter incrementing if, it, if there's a, a reason why it's being dropped through the box. So of course, this, the other version uh, of, of packet capture is on for management traffic. And management traffic is captured using TCP dump. Um, it retains its syntax, syntax, sorry, I've got COVID, but it does only pertain to management space and control plane. So if I wanted to run the command, Uh, okay, then I can I can run that, and <clears throat> got five packets used by the filter. And if I want to view them, I want to view them on the box. I will view pcap management pcap, uh, and it will be saved under management pcap. And then I can see, so I can see there that I've got my um, updates going out of there. So I can see the, the DNS. So it's looking for updates on paloutonetworks.com. It's looking for a IPv6 version as well. And then I can see the reply coming back from dns.google. Uh, and that's where it's, it's sending it. So it's sending it back a C name uh, to go to. And then what the A record um, refers to. So that's okay if you want to just look at that at the box so that would be for really quick stuff say for instance for dns when you're doing dns um checks and stuff on the box you can do it this way 
if there is something that's more complicated, then of course all the uh, TCP dump command still exists, so source and destination and port and so on. Um, and then if you wanted to view that uh, within like Wireshark, for instance, you can SCP it off the box. Um, SCP export management PCAP, and then you go from management PCAP <coughs> to, and then your um, username at host, and you can TFTP as well. So then you'd be able to view that, you'd be able to pull it down off whatever server that is, view that output, and um, and see see the, 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 the traffic. So that really is monitoring it. It's monitoring it in a nutshell, and it's very easy to do. Very easy to do packet captures. Um, yeah, so for troubleshooting, that's good. So like and subscribe if you feel that way out, and I'll catch you in the next video.